It's your boy Nguren in the house back with another review come Arsenal news and transfer news episode. So we are going to talk about uh, the awesome news that we got here about Martin Odegaard, the promise that was there. So somebody uh, at uh, thearsenalreview.com has actually uh, has provided a proper tactical analysis of Martin Odegaard's performance against uh, Benfica. So we are going to uh, put our thoughts on that and of course Arsenal are trying to sign a new youngster as well. So without any further ado, yeah, also, also, I keep forgetting this. Please subscribe and hit that like button. So whenever you see all the people who are watching it, please, please hit that like button. It helps my channel to grow. Anyway, so let's start with the Martin Odegaard's promising display on his first Arsenal start. Uh, well, Martin Odegaard made his first start for Arsenal against Leeds United. So let's, let's take a closer look at the tactically. What happened is that uh, Odegaard was utilized in the number 10 position with Smithrow in the left half space constantly drifting and Saka on the right hand side. Right from minute one, Arsenal pressed Leeds United high up the pitch. After some nice little combination play between Aubameyang and Cedric down the left hand side, Odegaard arrived in the box and after his shot was deflected, he regained possession to set up Smithrow. Unfortunately, it did not lead to a goal but it was a promising start for the Norwegian. One interesting facet in the game was how much Oba moved to the left, allowing Odegaard the space to make darts into the box from the number 10 position, something he did regularly. In this passage of play, Ceballos picks up the ball and plays it to Aubameyang, who drifted towards the left. Odegaard starts deeper and makes an intense run forward, running into the box, giving Oba that extra pass option. What, I, uh, what happened was that the, these runs from deep is not only uh, that are, they are very hard to track, but once the run is made, you tend to occupy defenders, which in turn opens up space for others. Now, in this scenario, the movement from Smithrow and Odegaard frees up space for Hector on the edge of the box. Unfortunately, the Spaniard couldn't make it count. On another day, it could have been a goal. We, let's let's move on in another scenario. So details have to go a long way. So off the ball, uh, Odegaard. In Odegaard's intensity was superb. He isn't passive by any means. There is an eagerness about him to press and help the team win balls in promising areas high up the pitch. Pascal Struik, who played as Leeds midfield pivot in the absence of Calvin Phillips, was closely man-marked by Odegaard, who did a fantastic job in this regard. As a result, Leeds tend tended to bypass him during the build-up, which affected the way they entered the final third. They looked extremely disjointed in the first half. In the modern game, there is no room for passengers. To play at number 10, you need to be intense high up the pitch. Odegaard certainly is. Add to this his positional discipline and capacity to follow such instructions. And yes, so Odegaard married his grit and determination of the ball with cute first time touches like the one he played to Ceballos. There are lots of, lots of moments that Odegaard really added a lot, a lot of flair. And that is the thing that he's going to bring in at Arsenal. So moving on, as we speak about Pep Guardiola opened up about Arsenal. He says, Arsenal have an exceptional build-up. They move with many, many cents. All the movements, they have the build-up to the final third. The quality for incredible energy for Smith, Saka and Aubameyang, especially with his runs in behind. And all the players that have the quality in middle to make the process quite well. So that's why, why they will be also in the present early future, a real contender to fight for the title. No, I did not inspire Arteta. What he is doing is credit to him and his backroom staff. He is not an exception. What I have seen in the last few months, every game Arsenal play, they are better than their opponents. Sometimes you don't win, you can't control. But what he is doing and the games in the last months, always they are better than opponent. They control games, create chances and concede few. They have an exceptional build-up. That's what he had to say. Also, we're going to talk about Arsenal are also keen on a young talent, the left winger from Sevilla, 20-year-old Sevilla, Brian Gill. The Spaniard has a 35 million euros release clause. Monkey is working to extend Brian Gill's uh, contract with a higher release clause of 150 million euros. The winger is currently on, lo on loan at Abar. Yes, Messi's favorite club, Abar. So moving on, so we are linked to this left winger. Let's see what happens. So Dani Ceballos has tweeted out after the game against Benfica. Now, he says, We did not hide yesterday on our first fight, but the second one is still to come. Now we are already thinking about Sunday's match, where we'll be giving our best as always. Let's go Gunners! At the rate Arsenal, hashtag Europa League, hashtag Premier League, hashtag Vamos Gunners, hashtag Gunners. It's always happy, isn't it? 
But moving on, so Pep Guardiola also opened up about Arte. He says the last months show me that all the managers need time, and he's not an exception. What I see in the last two months, every game Arsenal play, they're better than their opponents. As a manager, you want the results you deserve. Sometimes it does not happen, but in the games, they always uh, they are always better controlling, creating chances, and considering. Few. I already mentioned this. So Arteta opened up about Manchester City. He says, "I think they are the best team in Europe at the moment. The way they are performing, the football they are playing, and their consistent results. What they have done is react to difficult moments. A big team has to be able to do that." When everyone was doubting their ability to be able to compete again and be the team that they are. They reacted in a really convincing way. All United doing, uh, all United doing what they do best and being very consistent by winning games very comfortably. So moving on, so Bukayo Saka has some things to actually speak about. He says we can't put a foot wrong in the second leg because if we do, we will make it difficult for ourselves. It is about managing the game. Last year when we went out to Olympiacos, we conceded a silly goal. That was epic, wasn't it? The the Olympiacos goal that we conceded was. Hilarious. I mean, we just slept completely. So Martin Odegar and of course Nicola Pepe. There's an update about him. Uh, Martin Kion says, "I feel sorry for Pepe because he did really well for a couple of games, but they lost those games against Wolves and Villa. So Arteta is searching for the right balance with the ball and without the ball. Smithrow's defensive compass is better than Pepe." Also, sport say that neither Dani Ceballos nor, nor Odegaard are to the liking of Zinedine Zidane, but Real have different plans for them. While they would be open to listening to offers of around 25 million euros for Dani Ceballos, Real are not contemplating to sell Martin Odegaard. Now they are trying to use him as a bait for bringing in Erling Haaland to Real Madrid. Now you know that Real Madrid has not spent any money in the Yep, in the the transfer window that actually uh, ended, they really want to sign a big player. We all think that it it should be Mbappe. Is it going to be Mbappe? We'll we'll see if that is going to be happening or not. So Saka opens up about certain things. He says, "I feel like I'm improving every game. I'm trying to impress, trying to learn and listen to the boss because he gives great advice. I'm grateful to have a good team and a good family around me. I just want to keep progressing." So. Saka is definitely on, and Saka is really making things happen. And of course, one sad news is coming up as soon as we end this episode. Uh, also, also, uh, I will be soon uh, on my second channel. I'll be starting at uh, uh, <clears throat> TSV eighteen sixty mention uh, career mode episode. I will be updating it as well, uploading it on that channel. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I think we should definitely, definitely get the best out of it. It's like football heritage. It's like you know. Getting to learn history with uh, the career mode. I'm trying to do certain certain things like that. So, bear with me. Also, Willian. The bad news is that Willian was racially abused on Instagram. Yes, he was racially abused on Instagram, and he shared those images on his Instagram stories. So, he actually. This was one more. This one. This is one. Uh, this one was it. Uh, he uh, actually put this on his Instagram story. Something needs to change. The fight against racism. Continues. So yeah, look at the look at the guys. Is calling him effing monkey. Get back to the jungle. Why the hell do you get to play yesterday? Your damn shit, you monkey. So people are actually going out to Willian. See, you don't. If you don't like a player, I understand you don't like a player. I understand that you you don't like a player. I don't like what Willian brings to the table at Arsenal. I don't. I don't. But I have I have my limits. Well, and I've got to, you know, uh, agree with what the manager is putting up, and I have to take it. I have to take it as it is coming in, and this is hideous, hideous. You're frustrated with something. You call somebody that? The hell, man! That's so, so downgradable. It's it's downgrading yourself, and of course, the player doesn't deserve this. Piece of piece of crap, piece of crap opinion. I mean, if you have some crap opinion, stop and deactivate your account and start to have a life. It's it's really sad to to even experience this on a daily basis. 
So with this being this episode, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what you guys feel about the whole Villian incident, and of course, Brian Gill from Sevilla. Let us know what you guys feel feel about it. I will see you in the next one, and until then, cheers. Don't forget to subscribe. Fourteen thousand subscribers, can we have that, please? Let's do it. Cheers.